a lot has been written and said about that practice since. Here's a couple things that were tweeted during that practice from our buddy Chris Peterman. Well, that was an interesting practice. Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance received roughly equal reps with the starters during a move-the-ball period. Um, David Lombardi tweeted, hands down the most fascinating practice of the Shanahan era, just as I've been talking about for a while. He mix and match Garoppolo and Lance with both the first and second team offenses. Shanahan even swapped QBs multiple times mid-drive based on distance, down, and defense. And there's been a lot of talk since that Wednesday practice that, yes, while it does all signs point to Jimmy Garoppolo starting, that this is going to be maybe a different – this is not going to be maybe Kyle just feels like giving Trey Lance the fourth series and that's what he gets, that he's going to allow the circumstance of the game to dictate almost like a pinch hitter that doesn't have to sit out after you remove them, Taysom Hill style, what situations to bring Trey Lance in. This, it, by other, there used to be a phrase for this. It was called a two-quarterback system. But wouldn't you say historically in the NFL, much more than college, I think the famous line was always, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Right. Like, you know, it was viewed in college. It happened our entire life. It's, it does feel like it's happened less and less the last decade. has become college football has become more dependent on the quarterback. Obviously, it's just games have spread out and you throw it more. Right. Which I think when we were younger, running quarterbacks, it was all kind of, you could mix and match it pretty easily. You, it was a running back and defense centric sport. I, I, I do think this is fascinating because I, I do uh, align with the thinking if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Mm -hmm. That's just true. And I would say the most recent example of something that worked because the team was really good, they didn't have two quarterbacks. They had Drew Brees and the other guy just played a unique role, right? They gave it to him on like direct handoff sweeps. Uh, he, he, was a, he was a role player. I, I never viewed Taysom Hill as like, a two quarterback system. Did you like when you watch the saints play and even when they used them? I did not, but how do you think Drew Brees did Drew Brees feel like he was in a two quarterback? Well, system? yeah, he, he got yanked out of the game. I'm sure when he did not want to, but it was, he was never yanked out of the game more than a play or two where it does feel this one's liable to go on for a little longer. If Trey's cooking. Yeah. And but Jimmy's it, not but like it Drew just... was never going to get benched for, for uh, Taysom Hill. And that's, that's what makes that here. situation very different than this situation. Yeah. Th Taysom Hill was saying. not drafted third overall. They didn't trade the farm to get Taysom Hill. But this situation, has it really taken place over the last— Was Taysom Hill even drafted? Uh, I think it was an undrafted free agent. He got cut by the Packers. Because remember when he came out, you know he's like 32 years old. Like he he came out, he got into the NFL by the time he was like 27 because he was like a seventh year senior, went on a mission. Like he was, you're right. He's he just, a, he, well, he just turned 31 three days ago. All, all time outlier story. Like he's been in the league four years. He's 31. You know, he's like a year younger than Russell Wilson. But this does feel oh, to me like a little collegiate. Remember when Tebow first got there, and I think it was Chris Leak, the quarterback at Florida, and they were just like using them both. The jump because pass, like, baby. Remember that thing? T because Tebow was Urban's guy, but Leak was still good enough and yeah. they could win, but it was like clearly where it's headed. That's kind of the thing here. It does not work in the NFL. It never has, at least in modern football. And I just, it's, I'm not saying I question it, but there is risk involved. I, I do think you just get, it just show, it's shown consistently you are better off just Teddy Bridgewater's a guy, Drew Locke, you're the backup. Hey, Jimmy, now I'm not saying you can't bring Trey Lance in on a goal line play, but that's not what this feels like at all. Well, it feels if, like if we assume that Jimmy is going to be the starting quarterback. And as we've talked about, I kind of felt like Trey Lance was going to be the guy. But then I see Jimmy laughing like I do think he feels confident that he's going to be the starting quarterback week one. So it's hard to kind of go back and forth on this one. So I saw Matt Barrows said it or wrote it. I can't remember if this was on his podcast or if it's what he some of what I Barrows wrote a lot about it, too. And he mentioned Taysom Hill. Um and he said it, uh, it. Logic says it'll start as a smattering of snaps, and it could go up from there. You know, but what, but again, like, what does that mean on third and fourteen? Trey Lance comes into the game. Is that what that means? Like, part of my question is what we okay. We've seen Trey Lance. We know what we think of his skill set. We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo. We know what we think of his skill set. So, what does this to me is the question? What does Kyle Shanahan view as the situations where Trey Lance helps him? And the situations where Jimmy Garoppolo is a better option. It's e the goal line one's an easy one, right? Because the quarterback that can run and throw makes more sense on the goal line than the quarterback that can only throw. I, I'm not trying to be negative on this one, 
but hearing you talk, I think you got to keep three quarterbacks. Because if both guys are playing, like, what if Trey's in there on a running play, yeah. gets hurt, and then a couple plays later, Jimmy gets sacked and, like, breaks his I, – I mean – That's a good point. I don't I, – I just think it's much – when you have two quarterbacks, one guy does not play until the other guy comes out. But when you're putting them both in harm's way on any given play, it does complicate the situation. Again, I, I am not – I, I understand what he's doing, and you hit on this last, I think, on Monday's pod, or I guess we recorded on Sunday. Like, this guy needs to play. Like, that's just the only way he's going to get better. He needs to play. And I think Kyle knows that and wants to play him, but also knows Jimmy's probably things that he does better right now or at least feels more confident about. Or maybe it's just as simple as, like, I, I don't want to – we'll just ease into this thing, but it's just, it's, it's just not the way it usually works. <laughs> well, you let know? me state the obvious then. This is not good for Jimmy Garoppolo's long-term tenure. The we, we, we knew that, though, yes, didn't that's we? Why I said, that's why I'm stating the obvious in terms of 2022. But it's, it's also just, I think there, were time, there are times, right, when you look at it, it's not exactly the same as we've talked about as Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes. But there, were, there was no open door for Mahomes by week one or week two or week three to take Alex's snaps. Part of that was dependent on Alex was playing really, really well. This, they had their mind. They had their mind made up too with Patrick White. They had their mind right. made up, but like Alex Smith played really well. They won a lot of games, and then once that happens, there's no chance you're replacing the quarterback, right? Yeah. This doesn't even sound. I think we kind of thought about it like if Jimmy Garoppolo is the starter, then once the season starts, he can't lose. Like he's unless he gets hurt or plays poorly, Trey Lance isn't taking his job. But this is different than that. Like. Yeah. He can play well and lose the job if Trey Lance in his opportunities plays better than Jimmy does. So One playing thing well that, doesn't there the whole like Jimmy could win him the Super Bowl and then what do you do? Great problem to have. But if they win the Super Bowl this year, it's not gonna be with Jimmy Garoppolo taking all of their snaps. Yeah. I also think you could think best case scenario if I'm Kyle and I don't even want to deal with like worrying about the money guys, Parag and Jed. Being like, you know, can we get Jimmy to take a pay cut and still be the starter? You know, anything where you go, hey, guys, I can make him look good and it'll be a dual thing and he'll be a good teammate and everything. What if he has some value, even if we can get back a third round pick next year? Right. He's only make he's on the books next year for like 20 million dollars. That team can cut him at any moment. They get him in the building. We maybe can get his value back up this season. Yeah. Like there, because to me. Best case scenario, what if he's actually really good, and you, but you're still playing both of them, you start winning a bunch of games, everyone likes him, he's a great teammate. You know how teams get desperate. Like, what if you get a second-round pick, you know? Because, again, there are positives that, one, he plays the most important position. Two, you just never know how the – let's just say this is an awful year for quarterbacks coming out of the draft. It, it's hard to maintain the pace we've been on, right? Yeah. We've had multiple years with five quarterbacks. That – even in a quarterback centric league, you are very determined. Like, you know, Spencer Rattler I might have been texting with a guy at Oklahoma who wants some Tito's bottles sent to the facility. Like, you know, he does weigh 200 pounds. And he's like, he's a good player, but he's, he's still really young. The Howell guy in North Carolina, he's small. Slovis a couple years ago was like a borderline walk on type guy, right? Yeah. I guess, he, you know, he was like, what was his other offer? Like Colorado State? So you just, it doesn't feel as powerful as this crop. And that indirectly impacts, right, the the quarterback market, it, which has had the wide receiver market's been impacted by all the wide it, – it does the draft impacts, Jimmy. So you just never know. You know, I, I, I would say it's not likely, but I do think if you're Kyle, you can just talk your money guys into that scenario. Like, hey, I can get his fucking value back. Yeah, but but again, it, it's harder to get it, – it, maybe Kyle thinks it's easier to I'm get I'm saying the it's value worth back. the risk. I'm just saying you push that to sh- shut them up because – no one wants a backup, even a part-time quarterback making $25 million. It's Clor- bad business. Clorox is picking up some of that bill, though, John. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's a really thin needle that Kyle Shanahan's trying to thread here. It, you know what it, it, you made me think of just listening to you describe trying to get both quarterbacks only in the situations in which they're set up to succeed, right? Like you get Jimmy looking better because you're only putting him in the situations that are most optimal, if I can go analy- analytic for him to succeed. You ever been in a traffic jam? We all have. And there's two ways you can handle a traffic jam. You just stay in your lane and trust that, you know, no one's really going anywhere. The fastest way for me to get somewhere is just to stay in this one spot 
And eventually that, that lane moves a lot, but this lane moves a lot, but in the end it'll balance. And the other way to do it is to dart all over the place and see if in the end you can finish ahead of where you would have been when you're constantly changing lanes in, in stop and go traffic. And, and a two quarterback system is you're darting all over the place and you're trying to just, you're trying to hit every move exactly right. And it might work, but in the end, what inevitably happens in traffic is you look up and the car you were behind is 13 car links up on the other side and you jump back and you, it's just you, when you're doing it this way, you have to always hit it right. The more decisions you make, the more decisions you're making, the more mistakes you can make also. Or Kawasaki's flying down the middle, right? And you turn, they have the right, you clip them, he dies, Gavin, or maybe Larry Elder throws you in prison because they get the right away and all of a sudden you're screwed. My favorite AKA move go four games. is when I see them is when I see them coming up in the side mirror is I give them as much room as possible. All I want is that little like, oh yeah, this guy gets motorcyclist. And he gives you the, the peace sign as he goes by. I appreciate you looking out for me. I just want that. You know, I can't be cool enough on the motorcycle, but maybe a cool guy on a motorcycle. You know, when I, was in, when I was in Arizona over the summer, they are not legal to do that. You, you can't go to the middle, but you also don't have to wear helmets. Yeah, that's usually, I know Hawaii, it's, it's, it's usually one or the other. It's split lanes, wear helmets. You can't split lanes, but you don't have to wear a helmet. Hawaii is like everyone's in flip flops, no helmets. I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm not over the top just in general in life, super safety guy. That to me seems pretty fucking nuts not to wear a helmet on a motorcycle. Like that's, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. And I, the, the split lane thing is pretty crazy also i think but it's like if you can't split lanes what's the point of a motorcycle if i can't maneuver ahead of the rest of you okay right? gas mileage right i mean it's just i'm just saying like parking. i'm small enough to it's be like darren sproles and not and just like not being allowed to run through smaller holes it's like what's the point true but i i've always felt with the motorcycle guy like do i need to be caring about you as i'm driving as you're splitting lanes and i'm worried about cutting over like that's yeah, just I, I wish there was a way to do it without motorcycles being so loud if i could sound like an old man yeah i'm just not anyway, a big motorcycle guy i mean it's just yeah it's the the noise the noise pollution is what bothers me but i also yeah. feel cool when i move over and just you know let them live and let live that's kind of the idea yeah let them let them do their thing and i'll just hang over here i made the decision to drive a car and so i'm stuck so you are the overwhelming majority they're the overwhelming minority, right? Well, <laughs> I yeah. would say the car and a motorcycle is about. But you'd say the same thing about pedestrians point. sometimes, right? Like, True, why are you trying to cross this road? This road's for cars. Yeah, but I get, crossing the street to me is a little different than the motorcycle because well, they, they're operating. I got under I, the I got same problems operation. with pedestrians too, John. The whole like it's just I'm just gonna walk and I never have to stop at a four way stop. No, screw you, man. Like, what? Why do you have to be? Why do you have more of a, a right? I get right of way based on safety, but you don't have the right to get anywhere any quicker just because you're walking and I'm in this car. Like you stop. I've been at the stoplight. You just wait. Another thing that makes me feel like better than others. If I just stop and the car, like three other people walk and I wait and the guy in the car, like waves at you. Like, I appreciate that. I appreciate you following the unwritten rules of society. You've been living in the city for I'm a hot while. On that one. I, 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 I think in the suburbs, off. it's a little more normal. People, people just, just wait. You just let them go. Yeah, the wait or let no, them cross. Pedestrians in the city, it. they just fucking just walk well, and walk the, the, and walk it's, and the, walk. The, 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 the suburbs, not as much hustle and bustle. People just, you know, I'm going to pick up a salad. They're going to, to the park with the dog. You know, just everyone's just a little slower. What What is Shanahan? So Jimmy Garoppolo starts. I, I don't, I think one thing, John, he's going through all these scenarios and these practices trying to figure out exactly how to do it. In part, as he has said, part of it is about getting the players to feel a little comfortable with it. Because Garoppolo said this is weird, right? I'm sure for Trey Lance it's weird. The, the guys they're playing with, it's got to be a little it, bit weird. It is. It's weird. I mean, it, it's a weird thing. It's, yeah. Honestly, the coolest part about the Detroit Lions game is watching how this unfolds because he's not going to do it in a preseason game. The ebb and flow of it, right? I think he's going to do it a little bit against the Raiders. I thought. No. We'll say I'll be shocked. It, it, like I'll be shocked if he runs Trey Lance, which he hasn't, and do a true like on third down. He's going to bring in Trey Lance. Why would you do that at this point? Now uh, for the for the players. Just because I think part of it's like the game clock. Like, if you come running in, like, what's the play clock at? Do you know the down and distance? Do you know what the situation I, is? I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm cool with him doing it. I just – I think I, I do I think, think he's Barrows saving wrote that he so. might – or maybe the Lombardi. Somebody wrote that he might do some of that against the Raiders. But you're right. I mean, he said he was going to play Garoppolo after he played Lance, and he didn't. So Yeah. And he said, you know, our offense is going to look the exact same, and we went to practices, and they've run plays for Trey that have not looked the same at all. Yeah. Because we went to three straight practices – and they kept doing the same shit. I'm not trying to give away state secrets here. 
even though it's been reported, obviously running plays, RPO type stuff. He's done very normal Jimmy Garoppolo plays in, in my eyes for Trey Lance, right? Like a normal yeah. pocket quarterback. Yeah. Which if you can't do that, then this whole thing, it's, it doesn't work. Yeah. But eventually, and this is the overarching topic to me with any quarterback, and this is why everyone's kind of blowing Mac Jones right now, that is how you sustain playing football, throwing the ball. I mean, it's the number one. Lamar Jackson has had one of the most incredible starts to a career, non like Patrick Mahomes we've ever seen, right? Just his stats, how many games they've won, winning divisions. Like, it's been fucking awesome. And he's getting, he gets nitpicked a lot, right? Well, can he throw well enough? And that's going to be the number one question the next. Because if there were not questions about him, for example, throwing the ball, wouldn't his contract already be done? <laughs> like, what? Now, granted, he's negotiating it. Also, at the end, mom. they might just win so many games that the Ravens don't have a choice, right? There still might be questions when it comes time to give them a contract. And if they go 13-4, and four, Well, doesn't it feel like do? they're kind of there right now? If you're Lamar, you're like, well, just give me Josh Allen's contract. Right. Why would – I mean, I've done more than him. But, you know, it's not just Because if you, you if you were him, how would you accept any less? You just go check the two resumes. Yeah, I mean, depends. What happens this year? Does Josh Allen have a great year again? He doesn't have his – but if – if Lamar Jackson keeps playing the way he's playing, then you don't. He's had more great years. But it's not just about sustaining over 10 years, Trey Lance learning how to play quarterback that way. The the, the Taysom Hill thing, the like mix Trey Lance in, it, it it's kind of dependent on him being able to also do the things that Jimmy Garoppolo does, right? Like you say, oh, it's a changeup. But if I throw only changeups, then you know what's coming and you can hit my changeup. Now, one changeup is different than Trey Lance. You can have multiple running plays, right? But Trey Lance, at the end of the day, like Taysom Hill, the whole thing with Breeze, like part of it is occasionally Taysom has to throw the ball for there to be a threat of it. And I don't even like that comp so much. I like the comp from Garoppolo's standpoint of being replaced at times and having to keep your rhythm. I don't love the comp for Taysom and Trey Lance because I think, I mean, if Trey Lance is Taysom Hill, this is a historic failure. Yeah, I mean, Haber Middlecoff might go out of business. Let alone Kyle get fired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just... It'd be a disaster. And I don't think he is. Yeah. I don't... Like, Jameis Winston went in... No one's saying that. Immediately. But, no, I know. Um, Again, yeah. Taysom Hill is an all-time just outlier player. You know, he's just a unique... I, th- To me, they're all in on Trey Lance because they were all in on Trey Lance when they drafted him, what they moved for him. Taysom Hill, to me, is your classic, like, the coach really likes him. But not, they didn't give up anything for him, right? They just found him as a gem once upon a time. And I think they did give him, I think, like, I think he makes like 10 million bucks now. I mean, well, he they make, gave him like 40, yeah, allegedly. They, Remember that whole thing? He does not make, you know, 1.7 anymore. He makes some decent cash. And I think Jameis makes like three or four. So it's, but coaches, that's the balance to me of, the money matters in football. It's a huge conversation, how you build your team, who gets to play typically. It's a hard balance to kind of walk. You kind of th- – there's an emotional part to it, and then there's an unemotional part to it that Belichick's walked better than any coach ever. right? Like we always talk about, like fucking Belichick. Sony Michelle, he drafted him three years ago in the first round. The guy helped – Sony Michelle had two big games in the in the playoffs, the Rams game and I think the Chiefs – like he was good. And then he kind of got phased out. Again, first-round pick – over Nick Chubb, and boom, he's just gone. Like He's just unemotional with it all. Now, he has a lot more equity to make moves like that. Like the Niners, they get crushed, and all teams do, right? When you get when you make a move, like, damn, you just drafted that guy in the second round. We were like, Pettis, that was a disaster. Or Solomon Thomas, or the Raiders, Lynn Bowden, or Cleland Farrell. Like, no one can just pivot faster than the hoodie, but he has six fucking ranks. 